Good evening. I am Pej Manjitala, the Program Manager for Broward College's Film Production Technology Program. Welcome to the screening of our Spring 2021's graduating class, Capstone Films. I would like to congratulate each and every one of our Associate of Science graduates. As we all know, the past year has been a major challenge for all of us. It has made everything we do much more difficult, and that includes filmmaking. Our film students, while facing so many obstacles, have persevered, worked hard, and achieved their goals, and made some great films. Please join the film program's professors in congratulating our students. Hi, Professor William here. Congratulations to uh, all my former students, all of the students to the graduating class of 2021 here at Broward College. Wish I was there. I always wish I was there with you just congratulating you in person, but you did it. Congratulations, everybody. See you on the other side. Bye. Hi, guys. I just want to congratulate you all on a job well done. Congratulations to all of the 2021 Broward Film College uh, graduating class. It was really uh, my pleasure to meet all of you and work with all of you, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of your work in the future. And don't hesitate to reach out to us, whether you need a recommendation letter or even just someone to watch and give you a little bit of feedback on a demo reel, whatever it is. Use us as a resource, and congratulations again. Have a great summer. Hi guys, congratulations on your films and uh, graduating. Um, uh, I'm glad I uh, had a chance to work with many of you and uh, you know, hope that you'll stay in touch. Again, congratulations. Congratulations class of 2021, you did it. You graduated. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. What a tough year you had. You stuck it out. You showed how resourceful and resilient you all are. You should be proud of yourselves. I wish you all nothing but success in your future. College graduation is a great accomplishment. Graduating from college during a once in a century pandemic is truly remarkable. But great challenges bring great opportunities and the world will never be the same. Your strength and resilience is proof that you're ready for this moment. Congratulations on your graduation. You earn it. I wish you all the best. I don't know what you're thinking. No more fun at Broward College. No more assignments, quizzes, or final projects. All good times must come to an end. Nana, kid, they are looking at you. So I hear that you are graduating. Congratulations on your big day. I wish you all the best for your future endeavors. And remember, don't you do anything that I will do. Where is my femme fatale? Tonight's screening will be made up of a selection of short films made by our students across the program. We will be watching selected films from introduction to filmmaking, nonfiction filmmaking, and fiction filmmaking followed by the capstone films created by our graduates. First, we'll watch a selection of films from this semester's Introduction to Filmmaking course. This is their very first filmmaking project, and we are excited to share some of them with you. In this course, students make a two-minute short film on campus. They had to find actors, props, wardrobe, and all the necessary material to put together these productions.
Congratulations to the Introduction to Filmmaking students for starting their journey into filmmaking and sharing with us their creative works. Now come a selection of films from the nonfiction class. The students had to work hard to organize themselves to make these documentaries, filming off campus while maintaining COVID protocols. All of these were filmed and edited this semester, which is a great achievement. These are the nonfiction film selections.
my name is Patricia Vindel. I own a beauty salon in Pembroke Pine. Uh, we do hair and nails. I've been here for 17 years. First we rent. I was renting the chair and then I decided to buy the salon because the lady who used to own it uh, was um, retiring, so I required the salon. In the morning, I wake up and look at my book, my appointment book, and then I check most of my customers, they call me and to make an appointment the same day, it's like, can you get me, can you take me today? So I just come at my appointments. Sometimes you work till 8.30 because you have customers that come after work and then they, they come in and we take care of them after work. You know, so we stay till 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., whatever they need. I came here when I was 21. First, I came to California. Um, I stayed there for like around six months. So then I moved to New York and I stayed in New York for, you know, a couple of years. I didn't have no family, nothing. I came, I, when I went to New York, I had a brother. I have a brother and I went to his house and because um, he had his own family, of course, you know, having another person was not uh, a good thing. So I, I just went to work as a maid, you know, and I was, I was staying in the house. So, and that's what I started working like that in the beginning. I always liked to do hair, but I didn't have the chance to go to school back home. So um, I started in Wilfred down in New York, but I couldn't make it. So because it was expensive and the work and the kids. So I, the person, the person that I was working with uh, was moving to Fort Lauderdale. And they asked me if I will move with them, you know, and I decided to come. I, I filled the truck and I brought my two boys. I had two, two kids and I drove 24 hours to Florida. And then I came here uh, and the person that I was taking care of it, she, he died and he left me money. You know, not a lot. I think it was $10,000. And with that, I went to school. And I was doing from six to 10 at Sheridan Vocational Center. When I first started working as a hairdresser, it was scary, very scary, because you know, I started working in, a, in one of those chain you know, stores. And uh, I remember my manager say like, okay, Patricia, go and do your first haircut. So I remember that the, it was the guy, and I did not know how to use the clipper. It, it was funny because I called the manager in the middle of the hair guys like I can't do this it's just too much for me but uh, I finished and I did it and he paid and he gave me tips so it was good uh, that was one of the good things now of course I can you know now I, I can do I, I'm not afraid of anything at all I mean if it's about hair I can work with it I love color that's my base thing that's I, I love to do color I think it's a very um, challenging because uh, you have to know about colors. And, but uh, yeah, I, I guess now I'm natural. I know if you tell me, Patricia, I want blue highlights, I, I will figure out and I'll put you blue highlights, so. We have more personal, it's like more family oriented business. So we treat each client as a family. And, and I think that's why we've been in business. Even though with pandemic, we did um, survive because of that, because we do have our regular customers for 17 years, just the same people. And we always get referrals and that's the way our business work. Greg Young, uh, I'm known as Greg the Barber here in Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. My organization is called the Backpack Barber Foundation, which was created and uh, organized in 2017, end of 2017. I was born May 3rd, 1984, Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County. My father was in the military. Uh, 
parents split up right when I was born, roughly one year old. Moved to the Northeast, Delaware area. Those of you who aren't familiar, it's right outside of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Lived there until about 93, right after Hurricane Andrew. Folks reconnected and moved back to Florida. that got me interested in becoming a barber is a lot of it had to do with uh, a, a couple things. A lot of it had to do with the, the, the fastness of it. I, I like volume. Um, I like high intensity. I like um, I like stress. When, when I'm under stress and, and work, I, I perform best. Um, and, I, and I like that uh, high intake, high, high volume. I like the go, go, go. I like the fact that you know in a barber shop you got your sports on, you got uh, you got a lot of network, and that's something that I was I was uh, looking at mainly because I, I liked a lot of knowledge and education from the way I grew up and the situations and positions I was put in. Uh, I, li I liked a lot of opportunity to obtain the knowledge that I needed as I got older and. Uh, being in a barbershop, that vibe that you get can be so positive and uplifting, and that's something that I really strive with. I try to uh, wake up every day with a positive mindset and just really keep positive vibes the whole day. So the Backpack Barber Foundation It's an organization I created in 2017 that serves the main purpose and mission is to uplift the homeless and the underprivileged youth. So we provide haircuts and hygiene bags with toiletries and hygiene items. That conversation, and that stress the conversation to so many in the beginning, because you never really know what someone is feeling inside that's sleeping on the street that hasn't been talked to in so many years. You know? There's people that are this close to commit suicide, and there's people that are willing to just open up and tell you everything they've been through just because no one's spoken to them. Who knows how long? So that conversation that goes along with Erica. I choose the homeless. You know, I, I, I battled homelessness on and off throughout my life. Um, and it's just something that I hold close to. There were several times where I was just this close to being completely stuck in the street of being homeless and luckily I decided to put down, uh, put down the bottle and give up. I had to lose my balls anonymous. That's where I was able to obtain the clarity of life and understand life and life's terms and meet some great people. Um, start to understand how life really works standing life on life's terms and going back to where I was at parts of my life to where I could potentially be if I ever pick up again is why I'm so involved with the homeless community. Not only that, but there are there are neighbors. Whether people want to admit that or not, they're your neighbors. They're just sleeping outside. They're down on their luck, but they're still in the So what's next for the Backpack Barber Foundation is 2021. 2020 was a wild year. 2021 has been getting, getting better. We plan on eventually going back out to community court by August, which is uh, at City Hall, Fort Lauderdale, Panthers and Robert. Where we, pro we provide haircuts for the homeless that are experiencing homelessness that are going through. In 2019, I'll take a over 500 haircuts at Community Court. We're going to go back out there and start that. We're going to build strong with more partners within the community and build out our board and really make a positive impact throughout this community and work on creating.
creating that platform, that program that works here, that we can take here, put it here, put it here, and it be positively successful. So people can find my foundation by uh, checking us out at the backpackbarberfoundation.com. You can follow us on Instagram at Instagram at the Backpack Barber Foundation, as well as Facebook at the Backpack Barber Foundation. Google us, and for myself, you can find me on Instagram at Greg and Barber 954, uh, Greg Young on the Facebook, or you can stop by No Woman's Cut Shave in Fat Village and say hello. Your heartbeat should be the loudest thing you hear. When you're ready, pull it. I kind of always had such a big imagination in my head and I kind of played out scenarios in my head of what I to sequence it, it's more so just cutting it in my way, it's not figuring it out. Everyone wants to say it comes natural, I wish it came natural, but I think the only thing that came natural to me is having that imagination, and that imagination is what brought me my drive, and my drive is what brought me my education. My education is what's able to give me that effect. I don't think it's built in me. I think every day I'm watching videos on color, I'm watching videos on editing, I'm watching videos on film and stuff, so I'm like constantly educating my mind. And to me, it's not even school. It's not even educating my mind. It's when you're watching a video or like when you're learning about things, it's like passing time for me and it's like fun for me. It's not having to learn because I want to be good in it. And I think that's what it is. The people that are good at things is when they actually enjoy. You know, I have a specific way that I kind of want to go into it. Listen to me, It's only us now. And I'll do anything to keep it from becoming less than that. In order to do that, what do we need? I think you can answer that. We need to get on your boat. Editing is kind of everything. You can go in any direction that you want to. Mine's open for every way. My mind is kind of soaring to the sky. There's always our limitations that I don't see at first. But you know, with shooting high, I mean you're able to fall a good amount of distance. My imagination kind of just, you know, gives me some confidence that I'll be able to understand what you're talking about and we'll be able to, to, to flow with really. it. You use the little things that you have. Mi amo era en tal edil, es mi masterclass.
So David in the eight percent inspired me because like it's crazy how he started from nothing. He literally had absolutely nothing, an idea and a dream. They inspire me to to care about the details and to actually care about um, the people I surround myself with to work with. I've honestly, like to be honest, I've always wanted him to ask me to like be a part of it. Um, and I, when he told me, I literally went running to my mom. I was like, Mom, look, like I'm gonna be a part of it. I was so excited. Uh, my name is David, um, I'm a very long last name, so I usually just go by DRCR, those are my initials, it's kind of like my own thing and what everyone knows me for. So I was born here, I was born and raised in Miami. Uh, my mom is from Nicaragua, my dad's Colombian. Um, I think as a child, I, you know, I have parents that didn't go to school, like they didn't finish college. Um, and so, right, you, like you hear that, right, you're not in college educated people and you, you automatically something pops into your head. Um, I think the coolest thing about my parents and my family was that they sacrificed so much for me to have the experiences that very few people have, even like very wealthy people. So when I left high school, I went to a small, like super, super small college in the middle of North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. And I mean small, I mean like 2,800 people in a tiny town. The beach was four hours away. The nearest mall was 45 minutes away. Like, it was a very different change from growing up in Miami. Um, but because I had spent so much time in high school kind of becoming the camera person and becoming that guy, um, and I only did that for half of high school, two years, I wanted to make sure that I came into, like, I, I hit the ground running when I went to college. I wanted to make sure that, like, four years, as, as hard as I can possibly go, camera guy, 100%. Um, in hindsight, it was a very stupid decision. <laughs> Because I thought it'd be possible for me to move to a new state. I'm not a big school person. I'm not very big into academics. Um, so I thought, it'd be, I thought it'd be possible to move to a new state, go through college, make new friends, try to have a social life, do well in school for once, um, and become camera guy. And my response to being camera guy was trying to do YouTube videos in like 2018, 2017. So I would do YouTube videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and try to balance all of that together at once. Um, eventually, eventually I ended up fucking out of school. I had to move back home. Um, and honestly, I was, I was done with school. I was like, this is like, I'm, I'm done, I'm over it. And I just needed like a different creative outlet. So I didn't know how to graphic design. I grew up around my dad doing graphic design, but I never really like, took it seriously. And so I started messing with that. And one of like the first things I ever made it was like a very super, super simple sweater with my initials on it. And I just made one, I made it for me. Like I just made it because I was like, that'd be kind of cool, it was like merch. Um, I didn't think anybody would give a shit about it. People started asking about it. They're like, can I get that? Where can I get that? Can I pick one up? Can I buy one? And people just ended up like, people ended up really being interested in that sweater. Um, and I was like, okay, wait a minute. It'd be kind of cool to make clothes. I never thought I'd make clothes. I've never been like a huge fashion person. I've never seen the fucking runway shows and not really like uh, at that point I wasn't really tapped into this entire culture I wasn't into sneakers and hype beasts and I knew nothing about that so I was like okay, like, okay sure fuck it let's make clothes um, and the first question for me to myself was like what is it gonna be about because it can't be about me because I'm not no one gives a shit about me no one cares about me no one knows who I am um, <laughs> so I was writing a paper for school um, and I was looking for articles and just general stuff for research. And I came across this article by Inc. that I actually ended up printing and framing in my house, and hanging it up in my room. And the title of it was 92% of people don't end up achieving and realizing the dreams and goals they set for themselves. And I read that in my head. Um, I didn't really react at all. And the first thing that just came out of my mouth was, fuck that, I want to be part of the 8%. And I think that just whole, the typography of it, the way it sounded, the the length of, I don't know, something about it just like really hit me. And I think that really encompasses everything that I've always been about. And I think I just ran with the name. I think it's kind of cool.
entrepreneur, trumpet player, uh, student. Uh, I started playing my trumpet at the age of 13. Uh, then when I first got into middle school, I wanted to play sports. And my parents were like, nah, you're not gonna play sports, because I guess they didn't want me in that crowd of people. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go play trumpet. So I started playing trumpet and I was really passionate about it. Like off the jump, like I was practicing hours and hours and hours per day. And um, it went from me like, just like not wanting to be in band to like actually wanting to be there. So basically, I was really gonna plan to stop playing my trumpet and COVID happened and then like, we went on a spring break and we were supposed to come back and we never came back. I'm always going back and forth with so many different things. And like, that's just how my brain works. Like I always have to be doing something. I can't be sitting down doing nothing. So like during COVID, it was just kind of like, all I have is my laptop and just doing school and like nothing else. Like I was just really bored. Like there was no partying, there's no going out, there's no hanging out with friends. And I don't want to bring that home to my household because you know my dad has pre-existing like pre um, conditions and so does my little brother has asthma so I was like I, can't, I literally can't go out the house and I can't bring COVID home so basically I was like I'm gonna pick up my trumpet I just pick up my trumpet you know it's been a while it's been months since I've been playing and I just learned a song for fun and I played it made a video to it And then TikTok was not actually showing love in the beginning. It was I was only getting like 150, 80 views in the beginning. And what really got my TikTok popping is the Go Crazy Challenge. You know, like everybody's like dancing. Like you open the door, you jump out, you start dancing. Like everything you do is amazing. You know, they kind of just doing their thing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna make it to my own thing. Instead of dancing, I played the song on my trumpet. And then that video got four million views. And then um, during the whole Black Lives Matter, um, that time period like <clears throat> where people were marching and like it was like a really big moment so I played a change is gonna come and that video blew up I got posted on like a lot of other big promotional pages by called like we, we buy black and the NFL used the song um, on their TikTok and it was like it was just one after the next to the next to the next and then like later on a couple months later Alicia Keys were posting me and then it was just kind of like it was a crazy moment, so you know, everything just started going up for me. Uh, I really think my TikTok videos went viral because I've been studying jazz music for about six years prior. The music nowadays is a lot more simplified, so I'm taking all the knowledge that I've learned from being a jazz student and learning from like artists like Freddie Hubbard, Louis Armstrong, Roy Hargrove, uh, Winter Marsalis, taking all the knowledge that I learned from them, to applying it to the music nowadays and kind of adding my little spin to it, like, you know, my little sauce, you know what I'm saying? Definitely um, adding jazz, my jazz like licks, you know, my influence of jazz onto hip hop music nowadays, definitely like, why my videos went viral. I just want to be a full-time entrepreneur. Also, like, I trade in the stock market. I trade options. I also have a videography and a photography business. And you know, you know, and it's honestly it's, it's stressful because like I don't have a social life because I'm always working. I'm always, it's either working or I'm studying, and it's just kind of like there's a lot more value for my time right now. And um, so right now, I guess my goal is just like how can I take my life to the next level, and you know, like give back to my, my parents, you know, my little brothers and stuff like that, because I want to be able to help them out as much as I can. So I kind of just use like the platform that I built off of playing trumpet to meet a lot of wealthy people, especially down in Miami. So like those people kind of just taught me entrepreneurship and how to go about it. And they put me on to a lot more people. And that's why I was able to quit my job and take my photography and videography business full time. <laughs> Congratulations to the nonfiction filmmaking students. In the fiction filmmaking course, students produce 
the five page scripts that they wrote in the screenwriting fundamentals course they took prior to this class. These are the short fictional scripts that students put through the production process where they cast actors, found props, wardrobe, and other production design and filmed these on campus during the fall semester. This semester, they edited these films in the post-production workshop course. These are the fiction filmmaking short films. You are going in the wrong direction. No, turn around. You are almost there. Turn left. I said turn left. You are in the wrong location. Turn around. Your destination has been recalculated. You have reached your destination. Good luck! Chad, where in the hell are you? The pizza was never delivered. The client is so mad. You are so useless. You You're fired.
to ask you some questions. You've been in the school since 2015, right? We need your collaboration. I know what your father did to you. I know it's been hard. Avery, 
please say something. I promise myself he will never touch me again. And now, our feature presentation, two Capstone Project Productions. In the fall, the students in this course pitched their scripts to their peers. Based on the class size, they elected two of these to make into their Capstone films. Irregardless, a stoner comedy, and The Game, an action thriller. These stories went through development and pre-production during the fall Capstone production course and were filmed at the beginning of the spring term. They have spent the last months editing the picture and the sound. And tonight, we will screen the final cuts. Please enjoy the screening, and let's congratulate our graduating filmmakers who have worked so hard. On with the show. Chandler, where are you? I've been trying to reach you all day. Look, babe, I don't have a lot of time to talk to you right now. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ. Who do you owe this time? Or did someone find you? Was it DeMarco? No, it has nothing to do with fucking DeMarco. Then what is it? I took another risk. This is a little gamble. Are you fucking kidding me? After all the guys you already owe money to, you're out there making more bets? That has nothing to do with that. Would you just shut up for a second let me talk? Are you done? What is it? I need you to go to the apartment and get the gun. What? Why? We're packing the bags and we're skipping town. Why don't you have the gun with you then? I can't explain that right now. Okay, I just need you to do this for me. This time, please. Fine. Where are you? I'm at that shitty motel. And you're lucky he's off the highway. Hello. Who's this? Someone looking out for you. Oh yeah. I could have used that lookout a few hours ago. I'm sure your bruises will heal. Meet me at your smoking spot tomorrow morning. I have something that will interest you. Yeah, that sounds real generous. <laughs> yeah, why should I trust you? Aren't you a gambler? What's gambling without a little risk? Shiner you got there. Could be worse. You got one to spare? No, it's my last one. Sure. It's a beautiful day. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm not really in the talking mood right now. Mm -hmm. I think you might be interested in what I have to say, Mr. Norris. Or do you still go by Howard Sloan? 
not really sure how you managed to fool anybody with that name. You look nothing like Howard. <laughs> so I wouldn't reach for that. So how are you? Well, you see, I've been keeping tabs on you. I know that you owe six grand to Irving and Charleston. I know that you owe three grand to the Braxton brothers in Atlanta. And I know that you owe $25,000 to DeMarco in Orlando. Okay. So which one do you work for? I'm not here to collect. I'm here to give. A little more like offer an opportunity. See, I'm not really trying to owe any more people right now. Mm. Chandler, don't you think that Nora is getting tired of being on the run with a fuck up like you? She must be living the dream, having her boyfriend live off of her never getting to go anywhere that she wants to. Always having to leave the apartment, looking over her shoulder. What kind of opportunity exactly? It's a game. You play this game and it will be the biggest payout that you've ever had. Still in the game. The game? What kind of fucked up game is this? People are dead. Mr. Norris, what kind of game did you think would give you such a massive payout? Why do you sound so upset? <sighs> you have already found the prize. I think that's it. So we close letters. Paul, what are we waiting for? Some kind of invitation? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <gasps> Look at all this. Split 50-50, this is still gonna get me a brand new car. And you? Oh, you can get whatever the hell you want. I'm making it up to my girl for real this time. Your girl? Forget that. Enjoy it. Hold on a second. You don't think this is weird? All these weird rules and shit. The money's just out on the table. Look, I get the no weapons rule, because hell, I'd shoot you right now and keep this all to myself. It's probably just some whacked up government experiment or some bullshit, okay? All I see is a pile of cash with our names on it. So quit your bitching and let's- Mr. Norris? Mr. Norris? Are you still there? Yeah. I got the prize. And from our projections, all the other contestants have been eliminated. So I win, right? The game's over. That's it? Not yet. You might have finished your goal. But... The other team is still playing. What? The Hunters, Mr. Norris. They have a time limit, and they have an hour left to find you. You never said anything about Hunters. Okay, those masked freaks, they shot Simon right in front of me. <sighs> Mr. Norris, you agreed to play the game. You took the risk. 
Now, let's see how far your luck can go. Hey, it's okay. It's over. Chandler, I'm not going to get around eventually. What? Fuck. Thanks for letting me know what you were, though. I made finding you a lot easier. I've been trying to reach you all day. Well, where are you? I'm at that shitty motel. New Lucky's off the highway. We're done here. Do you hunt innocent people? No, no. We hunt desperate people. People who are at the end of their line. People like you. And your boyfriend. <laughs> He doesn't know that you're almost out of money, does he? I guess mommy and daddy's money doesn't last forever. So, <clears throat> given your current situation, I recommend you take this opportunity. Why me though? Why do I get to hunt him? Does it matter? No. I'm still getting paid, right? W wonderful.
doing here, man? Dude, you told me to meet you here. What the fuck? What is this, a kid's birthday party? Why would you have me meet you here? I'm working here. Just, just, just get in. Oh, dude, this phone won't stop. You have no idea how stressful it is being a drug dealer, man. I never know who wants what or who owes me what. Jeez. You got to get better organized, man. Here. Thanks, man. I hand write down every birthday party I do. See, of the different colors and for the different ages of the boys and girls. Then I use post-it notes to remember the dates. The yellow is like for the weekends, pink is for the weekdays. You need one of these. Maybe so. <laughs> You're a clever clown, Sam. I like organizing, man. Helps my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mom. Yeah. What? Okay, okay. Calm down. Where are you? I'm on my way. Okay. What was that all about, dude? It's my dad. What do you mean? What do I you gotta mean? go. You get, that means you gotta get the fuck out. What the fuck, Sam? Get the fuck out. Sam, what? I love you, man. So I prescribed Fred some blood thinners and a bunch of other heart medications. He's stable now, but it's very important that uh, he takes the medications regularly. Of course. Thank you so much, doctor. Yeah, sure. Sure. What, what the hell? No, 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 no. But it's very important not to excite him in this situation. Ooh. Dr. Cooper, this is our son, Sam. He came straight from work as soon as he heard the news. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Here's the thing though, Sam. I was just telling your mother that your father had a heart attack, right? He almost had a complete blockage in his arteries. Um, it's, uh, it's very, I, don't, I can't stress. Samuel, your dad almost didn't make it. You should take this seriously. Nobody takes this more seriously than me. Um, what about the firm? The, the business, it's like the most important thing for your dad. What if I take over? Yeah, I can take over. I'll watch over the place while dad gets better. Uh -huh. no, no, no. Oh my god. No, 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 oh my god. No. We got nothing else to do, so honey, stay wild. I'll do my best to keep you warm. And I got mine, it's not a lie, but it gets right back where I want. So I oh, hi Sam, nice to see you again. I'm Melissa Paxton. I've worked for your father for the past seven years. Wow, Melissa, you got it hot. <laughs> Take one of these. With your green. Hi, y'all. I'm Big Bob Selena. Big Bob Selena's autos. You all come down for a mind blowing sale. You can't legally find a better deal. These prices are so low, I'm going crazy. I mean, crazy. Oh. 
So, please stay on top of the Salida file. Big Bob is our most valued client. If he's happy, we're happy. Sam, are you all up to date on the spreadsheet for the Salida file? Yes, absolutely. Meeting adjourned. Sam, could you wait a second, please? No, what's up? What are you doing? What do you mean? I'm Hasn't helping your out? father been through enough? I'm just helping out my dad. Why don't you do him and everyone else a favor and just leave before you seriously fuck up all the hard work I've done? Excuse me. First day at work, suck dick, Adam. Yeah, hold on a second. <sighs> trying to fucking relax here. Yeah, that Melissa fucking hates me, man, you know? I thought this was gonna be my one opportunity, man, to put to my father that I'm not a fucking idiot, but I'm starting to think that I am. Dude, you're not an idiot. You're like the most responsible person I know. You see, that's why you're my friend, man. You're a good guy. I love you, man. I love you too, bro. I think you're right. Maybe I'm being hard on myself. You know what? I'm going to go raid my dad's prescriptions because this weed ain't cutting it for me tonight. I'll talk to you later, brother. Good night. Love you. That's it for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Hmm? Meeting adjourned. I work with a bunch of pieces of shit. Yo, Melissa. What is it, Sam? I've got a meeting with Big Bob in 20 minutes. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I think I should get to know Big Bob. Maybe I should take the meeting with him instead. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's such a good idea. My dad, your boss, will want me to be familiar with the case. Your dad, my boss, has told me can't. Excuse me, Melissa. Sorry. We're having some trouble with Mr. Lang's financial records. He's at risk of being audited. I could really use your help. Of course. Guess I'll call Big Bob and let him know you'll be meeting with him instead. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Anything else? You get the fuck out. Got work to do. 
it even works around here. For this fucking thing. Well, Sammy, sure is a pleasure to meet you, son. Pleasure's all mine, Big Bob. And thank you so much for showing me around your used car lot here. This place is magical. I can see why my dad values your business so much. Well, son, speaking of business, listen. Melissa's been taking good care of my dealership. Real good care. So, I'm willing to pay top dollar to take her on as my personal accountant. What? Fuck you, Big Bob. Wait, excuse no, me. fuck you, you man. Your hands off me. You're kicking in when he's down, man. I read the files. I know what my dad did for you when you first started. You get That's not here. cool, man. Get the hell away from Look, me. I pop, right out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get I, away from I, me. I talk. I speak and I can't. And I, get you know, out of here. I speak and I can't. Fucking, yeah. you know. Off my property. Big. Oh, damn it. Nice going, Samuel. Nice going. Big Bob! I think you dropped something, boy. Hey, man. That shit is medical, man. I have psoriasis. Without weed, my condition flares up. Look. Oh, look, look. The I'm, not, shit, I'm not lying, boy. man. Just please, please tell me you have more than this. Abundant amounts. Man, get in. Oh crap my phone. Um nope, fuck that shit. Um, I, love <laughs> I, I hate running my own business. I got people calling all the time. That's a total buzzkill. Dude, but you know, I got so many clients, I can't keep track of them. <laughs> you gotta get yourself one of these, man. Dude. Dude, you sure know how to prioritize. Oh, I sure could use someone like you around here. Um, I'm the fucking I'm gonna recognize. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, <sighs> hey, Big Bob, why don't you let me help you out? I can organize all this for you, but you gotta stay with my dad's friend. Well, boy, Sammy, keep me in regular supply of this weed here, and you got yourself a deal. Me ganja, so ganja, hey, huh? I love ya. I love you too, man. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm that. This is a relief. I was gonna say something earlier, but I don't want to make it all weird, you know. I don't get weird at all, man. <laughs> okay, ma'am. You have a great day. <laughs> Bitch. Fred, you look great. Why shouldn't I, Melissa? I've been resting, taking my medication, although there was a slight mix-up with my Vardenafil, however. <laughs> Very strange. What's Vardenafil? It's fancy way of saying boner medicine. Sam, what are you doing here? Melissa, you're looking at the man who kept my business afloat while I was sick. If it wasn't for him, we would have lost our most valuable client. In other words, Melissa, meet your new replacement, Sam Quivers. You've got to be kidding me. Good luck. Hey, Melissa. Mint? 